Hey everybody, Dave here. How you all doing tonight on April 21st? If you're wondering a little bit about why am I confusing for using face for the date, well, and if you can, since you couldn't see it on the podcast, it's still April 7th. It's the longest April 7th on record. It's three weeks long. Mm-hmm. So we're we're really stretching the time travel this week and last week, like. We're really talking to you from the past. How are you doing tonight, Greg? I'm doing quite well. You know, chatting here with you, it uh, always makes uh, for a good night. Being able to enjoy this hobby with uh, a fellow like-minded soul. And as promised last week, we have a pipe-centric episode. We're going to take a little break uh, from from Airbender and uh, just talk pipes. We're going to do the pipe part of the Syndicated Pipe Club. Yes. So, because I knew we were going to be doing multiple episodes, I picked small pipes for, uh, for tonight. So, I am not smoking the same pipe I was smoking last week. I am smoking this nice little Nording Compass. So, a good little pipe. Half uh, smooth, half rusticated on the top. A little bit of a modern uh, metal going on here with the pipe stem. It's just a beautiful little pipe. Smokes well. And in it, I'm smoking some Stonehenge Flake, which is... I've only smoked one other time before, and I'm getting a little uh, little spice off it. But I got the description right here, so... What Stonehenge is, it's a GLP's blend. And it is fine Virginia is layered with Louisiana Perique and just a touch of burley for added body and fuller flavor. And this is steamed and hot pressed and matured. Then thinly slight sliced cakes into nice nice flakes and uh, ready for your smoking pleasure. That's the description that was on the tin. And I must admit this is the first time to today is the very first time I tried the fold and stuff method with method with a flake. So we'll see how this goes. Very nice. What do you got going on tonight, Greg? You were smoking a bulldog last week. What are you gonna light up uh, this week? Because I see you just pulled put it out. So week yes. long. That's a week long bulldog. That was great. Yes. Yeah. Nice long lasting. Uh, tonight, though, I will be. Uh, next, moving on to this little, uh, I wouldn't say little, but this Stanwell uh, Black Brushed uh, Love It uh, with uh, C&D's uh, Canal Boat. So what all's in that? That is, uh, it's basically, like it's a cube cut burly blend with a, uh, I believe some English in it, but also uh, Cavendish. So it's uh, a little bit on the sweet side. Okay. All right. Sounds interesting. Yeah, I'm a big I'm a big fan of it. I wanted to try more. Uh, I, I picked it up because I wanted to try some uh, cubed uh, cube cut burly and. Uh, it was a winner, so it's just a blend that I just plan to keep on picking up uh, tins for. Sounds awesome. So tonight we've uh, come up with uh, a topic, something uh, I've heard other people talk about on other podcasts, but you, you know what? It's some, not something we've talked about, at least not recently. We are going to talk about where we would like to visit in regards to tobacconists. All right, what's on your must-visit list? And uh, I've got a couple, and I don't know how many Greg's got on hand, but uh, we shall just get right into that and talk about where we would like to visit. Absolutely. You know, like, uh, I've been fortunate enough to visit uh, some places I've been wanting to, to check out, but uh, there's still much more on my list that I'd love to scratch off uh, scratch off my list. Mm-hmm. 
one thing that I have going for me here that I find really, uh, really nice, just my location. Like where I'm located in Ontario, being really close to the Windsor Detroit border or the Sarnia Detroit, uh, the Sarnia border, the Blue Water Bridge, is it gives me a couple of uh, injection points into the U.S. And there are a lot of places that I could I could go that are you know within a couple of hours. I could, don't have to be huge pilgrimages by any means. There's a few uh, shops I've heard tell of in uh, Michigan, like maybe 20 minutes on the other side of the border from me that I'd, I'd like to maybe go check out one day. But uh, the real start out one is one of the most, um, probably the most well-known tobacconists and a favorite of people who uh, like to go to the Chicago Pipe Show. Uh, the uh, Ewan Reese is where I'd like to go. I've seen plenty of pictures of the inside of that place. I'd just like to go experience that one for myself. Yeah, even though, uh, you know, I've been from the Chicago area, um, I have yet to go to Elon Reeves. Uh, it is, I have um, stopped at their booth at the Chicago Pipe Show but and purchased uh, tobacco from them, but uh, I've yet to actually go to the brick and mortar shop in and of itself, which I'd like mm. to because they tend to stock blends like uh like uh, sam gawith blends uh blends that are a little, uh rat ray uh blends that are uh, a little bit harder for us uh uh and probably just all over uh you know north america is a little bit harder to to find mm, that's true because i've been to a few shops around on my side of the border and of course, they're mostly cigar-centric, like a lot of shops nowadays. But the ones that had some good good selection, they also didn't have anything from uh, um, Sam Gay with. Um, what's what's the other? What's another one? Um, oh, uh, shit. the name is escaping me. Esoterica. That's the one. That's the one. My, my next thing was, you know, if, if he hadn't come up with it, it was going to be, you know, the one with the gold gold tins, the gold foil packages, those ones, you know. The ones that uh, sell out within 10 minutes of it being mm -hmm. announced there in stock. Yeah, the ones, if you don't have a, a direct line to the distributor, you don't know they're coming out until it's too late. Right. But again, now that we've brought up es Esoterica, if anybody out there has and it doesn't have to be a full one just an empty tilbury tin i want it get a hold of me i just want the tin send me the tin why you ask because there's a town that's like 20 minutes from here that's named tilbury that's the only reason understandable What about you, Greg? Where, where's a shop you'd like to go visit other than you and Reese that you mentioned there briefly? Yeah, I'm going to try to pick different shops uh, from you. So uh, uh, I'm glad you're going first so that I can kind of uh, make adjustments as, as we go. Because um, that would have been on my list for sure. But I definitely have some backups. Um, first shop was actually up in uh, Michigan. And one that uh, I think could be a eventual uh, place for us to, you know, check out one day maybe because I feel like it's somewhat close to you. But it's called it's a Paul's Pipe Shop. Yes, I've heard of Paul's. And uh, unlike uh, probably ninety nine percent of the other shops that uh, you'll probably hear about tonight, uh, this one is. Uh, completely pipe focused you know it's uh their bread and butter it's all they they care to own and uh work so uh, uh i believe the owner like he, he carves his own pipes he has like pipes 
like tons of pipes just uh, hidden away in drawers, uh, like everywhere. And uh, I've only heard wonderful things about it. And, you know, like for me, it, like just as, you know, just being a pipe guy, like I just, you know, I, I've been to like some different uh, places, like uh, uh, there's a shop in Milwaukee that I, that I like. Uh, and they have a, a really good pipe selection, but everyone in there is usually, you know, with cigars. And uh, you know, I was able to hang out with uh, one forum member of uh, this pipe life, and mm-hmm. we were the two only two guys there with pipes. And you know, we we held our own. We were pretty, you know, it was still an enjoyable evening. But uh, I don't know I just uh, I, that's the only thing I really. Uh, care about in the hobby so i would just love to be able to hang out with other pipe guys and just uh talk about the hobby that way plus i like the you know the fact that and i've seen uh paul paul's pipe shop also has a uh booth at the chicago pipe shop the show and uh I've been through there and I've, uh, I'd love to go there and just, uh, purchase one of his pipes one day. Mm -hmm. Well, that just reminded me of another one that I wanted to go see. I was going to go a different direction, but I think I'm just going to quickly look it up on the internet. Well, uh, while you're doing that, I'll, I'll talk about another one. Okay. Um, you know, in college, I went to, uh, I lived in Springfield, Missouri, and uh, there was a uh, shop that I would always pass by, but I could never hope to visit unless I wanted to get expelled from my college, <laughs> which, uh, you know, was, you know, had a very low uh, opinion of smoking. Uh, but, uh, it's one that I, I always wanted to check out. And then once I got into the pipe scene, I was like, oh, uh, they actually have kind of a little bit of a following. I don't know if they still do as much, but uh, uh, but it's uh, uh, just for him in uh, Springfield, Missouri. And they were known for uh, their Lord of the Rings blends. They had some really uh, good ones, like with uh, Shortcut to Mushrooms. Uh, which is unfortunately discontinued uh, for the past couple of years. But I'd mainly like to go there just because, uh, one, it would be nice to visit my old college stomping grounds, and two, it would be nice to just finally go there and uh, just uh, finally check it out for myself. Sounds, Sounds good. Now, the one that I like that I came up with uh, while we were talking there about uh, your earlier choice was uh, Boswell's. Mm. And I thought about him because in his shop, because uh, while our local pipe club was able to meet, we had a couple of the states come through that we were doing our best to you know buy ourselves and you know sell what we couldn't to other collectors and whatnot and uh, we had a couple of boswell pipes come through and they're big pipes i mean huge you Mm -hmm. load that sucker up and you're smoking it like i joked about earlier about uh you smoking that that bulldog of yours for a week um I wouldn't have been joking with a Boswell pipe. I, I honestly think you'd be smoking that thing for days, starting and stopping before you can actually finish a bowl of it. I mean, it looks like those bowls on those things will hold like half an ounce of tobacco easy. Mm-hmm. Not like three grams or the little bit these little things will will take. Like we're talking, you're smoking for hours, if not days and I know they they are a tobacconist in the truest of senses they, they do 
pipes and they also do cigars but uh, their bread and butter is also from what I can read on their website um, is also mainly pipes they have the cigars but no tobacco shop should be without the cigars in this day and age because people are more into that right now even though pipes are making a comeback um, but yeah like I'd, I'd love to go and Let's see the see the see the shop where Boswell makes his pipes, or sells them at the very least. They just got they've got two locations, and they're both in Pennsylvania. One's in Schaumburg, and the other one is in Alexandria. So, there you go. That would be those would be interesting places to visit. Yeah, but I was going to bring that one up uh, at some point. Uh, I want to check it out because it's pretty close to uh, Gettysburg, at least uh, um, the, the first location that you mentioned is uh, right by Gettysburg. Uh, I'm friends with uh, a man that does uh, Civil War reenacting uh, out in California, and uh, he purchases uh, Boswell's to have on hand for uh, uh, reenactments and uh, to introduce people that are interested in uh, pipe smoking and we'll uh, basically sell them the pipe there and uh, pick up another one for uh, others to try. It was it was just too bad. Like, I mean, that, that I didn't have more money when those pipes came through our, uh, our club because I would have bought at least one of them. We had three. Mm-hmm. And uh, um, since COVID and all that, we haven't had a regular meeting in ages. We had one last summer, and I've just stopped just checking the Facebook page mainly because I've stopped using Facebook. So I don't even know. Yeah. But what's another one you where you'd want to go, Greg? Another one that I'd like to check out uh, is actually located in Tennessee, and uh, it is called the Gatlin Burlier. And uh, the Gatlin Burlier is located in a town called Gatlinburg, which uh, is famous because it's essentially like a uh, theme park town. Uh, run by uh, Dolly Parton, the country music star. Um, does a lot of humanitarian work and it does a lot for her, uh, you know, state of Tennessee. Uh, but uh, I've heard nothing but really positive things about uh, the Gatlin Burlier. And anyone that, uh, you know, is a pipe smoker that uh, is in the area, they always check that place out and uh, walk away with something. That would be interesting. Yeah, that would be interesting to go to. So I've got two more. And one is on my side of the border. Now, I say it's on my side of the border, I just mean it's in Canada. It's not near me. It's on the basically the coast. It's in BC. It's uh, Sheffield and Sons. It was established in 1976. It's mostly it's mostly a cigar shop from what I've seen on the website. But it's one of the few Canadian tobacconists that actually has a shop available. So that's simply the only reason it's on the list. Is like, if I ever get to BC, I'm going to find them and I'm going to go, even if I have to buy a cigar there, because that's as close as I can get to a, a local tobacconist, four or five provinces away on the coast. So probably never going to happen, but it's on my list. Maybe someday. What else do you got? So uh, my last selection for the evening is uh, 
uh, up in uh, Massachusetts, uh, in Boston. And uh, it is uh, LJ Paredes. And I uh, actually don't know too much about uh, LJ Paredes, but uh, one of the reasons why I'd like to, the, the main reason why I want to check them out is actually, uh, whereas like for the other, some of the other places it's been for their pipes, but for here, it would be for their pipe tobacco because they do a lot of uh, their own in-house blending and uh, do their own specialty blends. And uh, uh, they always have uh, positive reviews. Uh, I do have their Thanksgiving cake I picked up in, I think, 2018 or 2019. And uh, fantastic blend uh, and I, it's just a nice English and uh, heard they also have some really good uh, flake tobacco as well so uh, and you know like I've never been up in the Northeast and uh, there's just so much history there you know for uh, for America especially you know Boston and uh, like, I, I love that time period, so I'd love to just check all that out. Yeah. I'm always going to go anywhere. I think Boston would be a good place. Like, plan a trip. Boston would be a place I'd go to. Because, I mean, there was a famous tea party there. I don't want to, you know, see the history. I actually have ancestors that were around in the States back then, so... You know, there's some there's some family connection to that as well, but uh, yeah, just just to be where the history is, it's always something that uh, I've I've liked to do. Like when I was down in Louisiana for a while, a few years back, and uh, just loved being that being down there because there's plaques everywhere. You can read what you can read. When I took pictures of them just so I could bring them home with me. I loved being able to. You know, this is the local history, and part of part of me is with all the uh, all the stuff going on, where you know, you know, things are being you know retooled and history is being rewritten. It makes me kind of sad that some of those plaques may not be there if I ever get back. Yeah, yeah. I, under, I understand that you know the history history down there ain't the greatest, but if it ain't there to learn from, you're just gonna repeat it later. Mm-hmm. Those who don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it, and those who do, who, who uh, or don't learn from his from history correctly are just doomed. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately. Yeah, it just uh, you know I feel like every good like historical city needs a good uh, pipe shop there. Mm-hmm. And speaking of cities with good pipe shops, saving one of my, one of my, one of my top, my this is actually my top choice. Like saving the best for last, in my, in my opinion. Partially because I can go there and I can find my name there. I'll explain in a minute. But uh, if I ever do a do a, a pipe tour, I'm going to be going to Jackson, Mississippi. And any of you who are listening to the sh- listening to the show or watching the show right now, know what's coming next. The shop I want to go to there is, of course, the Country Squire. Absolutely. And I even already have my wife on board. We were planning, starting to plan a trip before all this chaos happened. And by that, I just mean our our lives in general, the COVID thing that hadn't ruined any any trip planning it just things had happened and we were we were thinking of going and heading down to louisiana when we had a smaller family and i had talked her into stopping in jackson on the way which is not really on the way but you know for a few hour a few hour to del- few hour delay like flying into jackson and staying there a couple days and visiting the shop meeting john david i mean I listen to the Country Square Radio almost religiously. I've been out of podcasting listening to because 
We've been pretty busy here pulling the sun out from school and getting the homeschooling going. And, you know, the last couple of years have just been chaos. So it's nice to sit and listen, listen to Bo and, and John David, you know, just be people just talking and hearing their, hearing their, their issues. And so I, I just think it'd be fun to go there. And for a few years now, I've been supporting uh, Country Squire Radio as a patron on Patreon at the Squire level. And um, after a year of that, you get your name put on a little little plaque, and it's up in the Country Squire. So right now, you can go to the Country Squire, and you can find my name up on the plaques. I just want to go see it myself in person one day. Absolutely. Yeah, all these places that uh, we've talked about are places I'd love to go check out. Um, one real quick that I just remembered that uh, I hadn't mentioned that uh, I almost had a chance to go to, but uh, just kind of ran out of time. But in uh, South Carolina, I'd love to check out uh, uh, Low County uh, uh, Tobacconist, the uh, tobacco shop that uh, runs uh, smokingpipes.com. Ah, yes. That would be a good one to go to, too. Mm -hmm. But there you go. If you've been planning, if you're in the States, you've been planning uh, a little bit of a trip, there's some suggestions for you. Along with, you know, you never know. One day you may find one or both of us there. Who knows? Absolutely. But we're coming up on that time again. Time to go back to to the real world and finally let April 7th die. Yes. So if you are looking to follow us throughout the week, you can always find me on Twitter at DrAlien201. You can email the show with any suggestions or requests for shows or pipe topics. Anything at all. It's fair game, really. You email it, we'll probably talk about it. Um, that's reverse flash time at gmail.com. Greg, where can the people find you? You can find me on Twitter at uh, the underscore Badger Piper. And uh, as the Badger Piper on uh, Instagram. I also have a WordPress blog, uh, badgerpiper.wordpress.com. So you can uh, read uh, the hype stuff that I've written up there. And if you, I was going to say something else and I forgot what it was. So we'll just ignore it. Forget I said anything. Everybody have good smokes, great entertainment, and we'll see you next week. Talk with you later.